happy Wednesday and welcome to this week's slice of advice. Also, just letting you know, uh, we do have a secret guest who is napping, but we love him anyway. So today I am going to be talking to the wonderful uh, Kel or Kelly Spencer, um, otherwise known as Kel Sunshine. Uh, I'm really looking forward to chatting with her because it's actually like somehow, somehow, some way, it's been like over two years since her and I caught up on the wonderful Gold Coast uh, at Typism. Now, I'm not sure about you guys, but I am having massive Typism withdrawals. Uh, typism, I think I only went to like two or three, but as soon as I was there, I was hooked. It's such an incredible community and an incredible experience to be surrounded by, you know, just a whole heap of creatives and a whole heap of uh, just, it's just so inspiring. So if any of you have ever been to a conference or you have been to the Typism conference, you kind of know what I'm talking about when it comes to just, it's an electric feeling, right? So two years ago when I was there at the Typism conference, Kelly Spencer was one of the speakers and I had never met Kelly before at all whatsoever. So that year I actually was uh, kind of representing, self-representing uh, Melbourne Lettering Club there and decided that I wanted to learn more about these speakers. I wanted to learn who they were, what they did, everything about them that I could. So I set up, uh, sorry, set up um, uh, Facebook Lives on the uh, Melbourne Lettering Club uh, Facebook group and just kind of, that was kind of my first experience of interviewing someone, of having these interactions. And I gotta say, I learned so much doing them, like so much. I had these experiences where I was talking to these people that I really admired, like Hamrick, uh, Kelly Spencer. Um, like I had these really cool in-depth conversations. Oh, um, um, iPad lettering as well, Karen. And just finding out a little bit about them. And I had no idea who they kind of were as people beforehand, which I think a lot of the time we kind of get that lost of like, oh, oh, that's right. Uh, there's a person behind the designer. There's a person behind the kind of, yeah, it's kind of a, a situation where you're kind of going, oh yeah, that's, that's right. I want to learn more about the person behind the artwork or behind the creation. And so um, having these kind of interactions and, and meetings, even off camera or on camera, it didn't really matter. It really started me enjoying that, um, that process of asking questions and finding out more about them. And so Kelly was one of those people where, um, so I've actually gotten Kelly on this, on the slice of advice this week, because I've been talking a lot about money lately. Like it's been a lot about doing your numbers, doing your cash, doing your, your, your sum so that you can work out exactly how much you should be charging to cover yourself. But as I'm finding, there's a lot more different things that play into that whole equation, right? So, um, finding out that, you know, we all know that money isn't everything, but it does play a really kind of vital part in that whole process. So I'm getting Kelly on this time because I want to kind of share with you that it's very true that money isn't everything. It isn't a, a case of, um, uh, join the live. Sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, I love the fact that <laughs> Kelly's just messaged me on Instagram being like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Jazz, you coming? <laughs> okay. So once she joins, it'd be really cool. Um, also, um, thank you, Angel Bar 07. Uh, thanks so much for take, uh, talking about the money portion, just getting started and it's helped me getting on the right foot. And that's so important. I mean, it's really... Um, a case of 
you know, the more we talk about money, the better we feel, but it's also something that we have to get comfortable with and also something that we need to just get, get more confidence by experiencing it more. So anyway, completely sidetracked. So today I'm going to be having Kel Sunshine join us. I'm going to join her to the conversation. Yes. <laughs> I clearly get way too excited for these because this time each week is my favorite time in the world because I get to talk to like you, Kel. Oh, Hi, I definitely friend. just lost my AirPod. <laughs> See, I told you, we're clunky, but we're cute. It's cool. It's fine. It's yeah, all it's my good. vibe. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Kel. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So I was saying at the start of this that um, I'm only kind of just realizing it's actually been a good two years since these faces were, I know, I know. And the, the time goes so quickly and I was kind of reminiscing about one, being in warmth because, mm. oh my goodness, we had like a 23 degree day here today and I was just like, everyone get outside. I actually Dreamy. sat in this like, yeah, I know, right? And I was like sit, sitting in this portion of sunlight, just like, <laughs> like recharging completely on my, my charging dock of sunlight. Um, but, you know, it's been two years since we were all together and at typism and talking mm -hmm. and chatting. And yeah. I actually think it's been three years since you presented, yeah? Four, I think. Four years? It was 2017. Look, yep. um, time has no concept whatsoever anymore. If you're, I was actually um, talking to, uh, on our kind of daily allocated walk, um, we mm. passed a couple of people that were talking about um, like the timing of things. And they were like, oh, yeah, it was between lockdowns four and five. <laughs> and the fact that we're using lockdowns as, like, a measure of time, I feel like it's, like, if you were someone who had, like, seven ex-wives, <laughs> you're just like, oh, yeah, between <laughs> ex-wife four and five. Like, that's, that's when I had my mental breakdown. <laughs> yep, yep. It actually can be a really great measure of time, ex-partners. I've used that technique myself in the past. Yeah, well. yeah, it's, yeah, it works well. So we've completely like just like dove right into other <laughs> random stuff. But for those who don't know Kel Sunshine, firstly, you're missing out on an absolute ray of sunshine. And, you know, you know when people like name themselves or put something about themselves and you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Literal <laughs> ray of sunshine is Kelly. Um, I actually remember when I did meet you at Typism, uh, on stage, you were wearing a romper, I'm pretty sure. And I was like, oh, mm. yeah, yeah. So you've got, like you've got a lot of inspiration. Time, yeah, yeah. You are yeah. the romper queen. To be fair, I don't think I've had any other since, but damn, I had a good time <laughs> in that one. Oh, like I had someone say to me like, oh, but, but it's getting cold. You have to get naked to pee. And I'm like, I, that's an investment I am willing to take. Like that's <laughs> that I can do. And it's, it's never enough. Also, spring has sprung, so it's going to be okay. First day of spring. First day of spring. Global well, warming is real, but first day of spring. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It's more or less, it's a, it's a guideline. 23 <laughs> degrees. Get out of here. <laughs> Bless. <laughs> so, yeah, for those who don't uh, know you, Kelly, I'd love for you to introduce yourself in a couple of sentences. Go. Right, yeah. I am Cal Sunshine. I live in New Zealand, which is where I'm also from. Um, I am predominantly a lettering artist, but then that splits into murals and illustration and sign painting. And if you ask very nicely, design, but it's an illustrative type of design. It's not the type where I'm going to give you um, a entire PDF with um, I don't even know what that stuff's called, Jess. You probably do. Long form design. You're not a long form designer. It's, Thank it's you. That's the word. Yeah. I'm an attention deficit designer. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, sh shiny thing. Woo. Uh, yep, yeah. I completely understand that. <laughs> yep. Cool. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's your that's thing. That's me. And that's, that's about me. Yeah. 
I love I love to travel and I love to be warm and I love dogs um, and I love collaborating with people and yeah I just love doing what I do. Well uh, speaking of dogs I did make sure that Rizzo was close by as you can see. No. Yeah I had to, Pippi's a puppy so I had to bribe her with a bone. She's on the back lawn D- distracted by that for hopefully the duration of this interview because otherwise she would come and demand things. Look, we don't mind distractions here. Um, we last week <laughs> had Terence had the, the kidlets come and join. Um, Mimu oh, came and yeah. join and said hi. Um, we've had all kinds of distractions and that's what the one thing I'm really learning about these Instagram lives is it's not about the polish, it's about the people. And yeah, so, totally. you know, getting that kind of little window into you know, the fact of the matter is your entire life isn't just uh, sitting in your space doing what you do. It's all of the life that lives around it. And that's really important, yeah. I think, to remember. Yeah, it's getting up every 10 minutes to open or close a door for a really cute puppy that might demand cuddles or playtime at any time. Yep. Really, uh, we really did get like a, a dog door at one point, but then we live in an apartment block so people walk mm. past and the dog's like must offend and just runs out there <laughs> like every hour and i'm like people exist out these outside these four walls dude it's fine like it's mm. good mm. yeah i Wait. imagine chorizo looks really tough too yeah no he has um he has hoodies and like tear off uh <laughs> denim jackets and stuff so like he's <laughs> Big and scary. Um, he likes to think that he is the same size as like the Doberman that lives around the corner. Like it's just yeah. small dog yeah. syndrome. Big dog attitude. Yeah. So I'm glad everyone's here to listen to us talk about dogs. That's great. Yeah. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining <laughs> us. Uh, <laughs> but today I wanted to talk to you um, partially about the, you know, we both know that I love to talk about pricing, but I want to really kind of drill down into, okay, we've got the side of things that is pricing, but there's other things that are valuable as well. So generally I kind of start off with similar kind of questions. So how do you prefer to price your projects and why do you prefer to price your projects that way? Right. So I do murals and illustration differently. So with my mural work, I price that at a day rate. Um, and I also separate it out. So um, a lot of, I think a lot of muralists don't do this. Also, a lot of friends of mine do it by the square meter, but that just, I, I just, I don't like that. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't really fit the way I work. Put it that way. Um, but I like it, and it looks great. It looks easy to press things that way. Um, yeah, I do square meterage, but I also do. A square meterage side and a complexity side. So it all kind of like, you know, the, yeah. the GIF with all of the calculations, like that's me half the time. <laughs> and I might transition to that in time. We'll see because, yeah, it's got its merits for sure. But at this point, I know how fast I paint. Um, I know what differences a surface is going to make, <laughs> you know, if it's um, stucco or like a beautiful flat jib wall. Um, yeah, and so you take all those time considerations into play, and because I've got previous examples, I can I write down everything, how long everything actually took at the end of a project, and then I can sort of go back and reference that to check if um, you know more or less how long it's going to take. But I generally get it pretty right, not always perfect, but yeah. So day rate for the murals, and I break it down into um, a design rate. And then the An execution to, to execute to, to paint plus materials mm-hmm. and access equipment as a lifts, whatever, if they're needed as well. Um, and that's been working for me. That's easy. And I found that clients do appreciate to see the design rates separated out because I, I think not with everyone, but, you know, sometimes there's that disconnect of like, you will just show up at the wall and then the design will come out there i will just uh, plug the usb into my <laughs> arm and just <laughs> there's actually yeah, another person like... um who's currently watching hi kyle kyle is actually the other person kyle. that i know that does a day rate for murals as well and right. <clears throat> i spoke to him a little while ago and he's actually on an upcoming episode uh, i think yes. next week actually um Yay, kyle. 
<laughs> Woo! Um, and I, him and I have talked a little bit about how we price murals. And the fact of the matter is you can probably do those day rates once you've got the experience of knowing how long things take, the fact that there's a massive difference between um, doing a wall that has dark blue to bright yellow. Like you know mm. that the mm. coverage is going to be a, a different expectation. You know that um, the difference between hi Kyle, um, the difference between a brick wall with a recess, oh, yeah. like like um, I don't even know what the center of those things would be called, but the, the grout, I guess. Oh um, yeah, that stuff sucks. Like there's a big difference between that and then a stucco, and then like just you. Holy Grail that is a flat, nice MDF yeah. kind of style clean mm, wall. Which, oh. yeah. um, but, you know, I think that understanding that um, you've gotten to a point where you go, I know that this takes me this long and I have confidence that it takes me this long. Um, Morta, thank you. Morta. Thanks, Madam hey, hey. VS. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, like, you, you know your stuff. And when you're starting out, so when you, have you always done it as a day rate or was it different when you were starting out? Mm, no, I think, I think I, oh shit, I don't know. I think I probably tried to price it hourly when I started doing murals. <laughs> um, probably definitely didn't charge enough, I'd say. It's what we <laughs> do. The way. We're really <laughs> good at that. <laughs> um, yeah, I must have been trying to charge it hourly because I'd come from an Ill illustrative background and so the answer to the second half of your question is, yeah, I price all my illustrative stuff hourly. And again, I've been doing it for, I don't know, 11 or 12 or something years. So I've got a pretty good grip on how long stuff's going to take. Um, also with illustration, you, I generally have some movement in there. And when it starts to go beyond the scope of the original quote, I'll hit the client up and go, hey, stuff's ended up taking longer because this, that, whatever variables, you know, like, you forgot to reply to me for several months um which or, happens <laughs> or years yeah. i've got one you illustration this by going death on by like committee. one point oh my god oh, <laughs> a camel is a horse made by a committee like it, nothing has ever been truer it's just <laughs> that's great just <laughs> that. i've got an illustration job that uh yeah we're going on 1.5 years as i like paid deposit and i went okay your part to doing this is to go out to your community and get these answers so then I can illustrate them and put them on a digital illustration mural. And they went, yeah. okay. And then they came back to me a year later and they went, how's it going? And I went, have you done your stuff? Have you done your part of the job? And they're like, no, we'll get back to you. And now we're like, we're a, a year and a half later. And you're like, yeah, this is so uh, sweet, buddy. I love those ones. I love them. And the ones that come back, um, you send them something and they're like, hey, here's the concepts, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me know what you think. Four weeks later, you hear back about whatever their feedback is. And then the email ends with, right, so how quickly can we turn this around? <laughs> Four yep. weeks more quick. <laughs> yep. I had one job that I was like, so it was, I've been doing some kind of, there's the decor design stuff, but there's other little bits and pieces I've been doing lately. And, and some of that has been um, corporate gifting and, and creating brand experiences yeah, for cool customers and clients to do for their staff members or as direct marketing campaigns and there was one that did an inquiry they sent the inquiry and then I said okay let's jump on a call and they said okay let's hold on and then a month later they're like okay can you put together a quote and I was like sure not a problem a lot of these items generally take like two to three weeks to turn around and we are in you know a panorama um and <laughs> like like that's just what it is. And they're like, oh, we're not, we're, that's, that's pretty harsh. Like, you know, three weeks to turn around items. That's, that's pretty hard. And I'm like, it's really not, it's really not at all. Um, but then they go, okay, we will get back to you um, with a confirmation. And that's been three weeks. We could have had this done. Like this, yeah. this could have been yeah. done in the three weeks that you were worried about that you have dragged your feet yeah. and understanding that that's actually not necessarily billable, but it impacts that, it is. Yep. that process. It really does. It's taking up brain space <laughs> and it's also making it harder to reply to other clients. Say like, well, technically, no, I don't have 
time for this, but I also know in the back of my mind that this person's kind of just wavering around. And then you've got this like kind of weird hierarchy where you're kind of this person who faffed around is having to dip back in and steal bits of time from other things. And mm. So yeah, I, it's weird, I eh? saw a really it's good weird. video. Um, I don't even know where it was. It was probably on a reel because that's where I spend a lot of my time lately. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was this guy who was like, when you ask for feedback, actually having the wording of like, if you could please reply with feedback by this date so as to not impact the timeline. And I don't even know why I didn't even think of that. Like I sat there and went, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, I really should be doing that. I actually should be putting it back on them to be like, not like, what do you think? It'll be, please provide your constructive and actionable feedback by this time so that we can get the job done. Like it, yeah, that's a really I don't even good know why call. I didn't think about it. <laughs> We should start doing that. I might start doing yeah. that with red flag clients. I know you. Any? Oh yeah, they're there, and they <laughs> they, can they, they, they get cha- they get charged facts. To me, they, the faff is a fuck around fee, and if you, Ooh, nice. <laughs> yeah, if you're you know if you're getting fees, you're that's probably why. Like yeah, if you that's take up more you energy. Need- <laughs> you deserve to pay more <laughs> that's the best acronym I've ever heard and I hate acronyms <laughs> well that's it you, uh, if anyone wants to make me make an acrostic poem out of Kel Sunshine we can just do and that's be like an acronym slash acrostic poem just <laughs> bam <laughs> please it has to be funny <laughs> one condition Exactly. So what is the best kind of lesson that you've learned from pricing like when it comes to pricing your work, when it comes to pricing what you do? I mean, I feel like it's a, a, a magical skill that you can sit there and go, this is going to take 17 hours. Therefore it's this much. Like that's, yeah, that's kind of wizardry. I just want to let you know. Um, <laughs> Aww, but it's experience. Also, so yeah, you can't, the best lesson that I've ever learned about pricing, it's not necessarily that I've taught, it's not at all that I taught myself, but when I was a young designer, young, uh, when I was a a fresher designer. Yes, because we're, because we're old now, we're, we're decrepit and old, we're plus that, no, you're Uh, late, we're we're older millennials, okay? Your late early thirties, like me, or your late twenties? Mid, mid. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my thirties. I'm seventy-four years old. <laughs> mid to late thirties. Um, huh. I'm, I'm an elder, elder millennial. Is is the term for my age bracket? And I was yeah. I was devastated when I found out that I was a millennial initially because I was dissing them, but I realised that I was actually talking about Gen oh, Z and that I'm a millennial, and that's cool. Um, Yep, I actually think that I did a video um, video message to someone that I was trying to get on slide for like some collaboration stuff, and I'm pretty sure I finished the video with, "So I'm a elder millennial who's not great at making friends. Want to be Instagram friends?" And I was like, "Wow, Jazz, cringe. Just send it and just move the fuck on. Like you can't do anything about it. It's gone." <laughs> We're a lovable generation. It's we fine. Are. We've done a lot. Um, yeah. We've done the self loathing so that you don't do it, have to do it for us. It's fine. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> yeah. And like, we're trying to bridge a gap between boomers and Gen Z. Like, that's some crazy shit. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Well, who's above us, Gen X? Gen X. Yeah. Cool. They're round. Um, They're round there. The best lesson. <laughs> this is tangent ballet. Eh? The best lesson mm. that I was ever taught was when I was a younger designer. Um, uh, a another artist who was probably 15 years older than me said when I was having an exhibition, he said, every time you underprice your own work, you are underselling the whole industry. And I was like, oosh, going to carry that on my shoulders. I love that. I love Much that. Good advice, and I've given it to a hundred people since because it's so damn true. Every time we've like, we operate in a strange realm. This, creative 
work is like you know we've, we've gone through this weird phase of having to basically validate it in my career mm -hmm. anyway um with great success but it still operates in a really unique wonderful realm that is a little bit different from regular jobs yeah yeah all <laughs> those they muggles are. that are <laughs> clocking off at five and have brain space to go and just do things in the evening it sounds amazing holiday pay hello yes please <laughs> sick leave um anyway so so there has there is a responsibility within the, this industry still to uphold good pricing standards as you know um so that really like that that came down on me like a ton of bricks i was like shit you're right i do have a responsibility here and have carried it through with me and tried to tell other people that and have impact on them as i've gone as well but yeah it's kind of like you're sitting there going, I am not worth this much. Therefore, you, you and you are exactly the same. Like you wouldn't yeah. say that to someone. You'd be like, you wouldn't say to them, you, sh you mm. should be charging less. Yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's an interesting kind of balance that we obviously have to, to walk of going, okay, um, I need to price myself so that I can make a living and make a life because it's not just about the day-to-day -day bills that come in and you still have enough to get a really nice cheese at the end of the week yeah but it's also about creating a space where we are valued and I was actually talking to one of my um so whenever anyone signs up to my um pricing calculator I ask them a question of like what is the biggest struggle you have with when it comes to your pricing um yeah. or your biggest fear and a lot of them say, like, I'm scared that I'm too expensive um, and no one's going to hire me. Yeah. And it's like, well, there's expensive surgeons and there's doctors and there's specialists. So if you yeah. can position yourself so that you are a specialist, people are going to be more willing to pay. And there is so many clients. There is so many clients out there. Yeah. I wish that my vet would come to me and say, like, I'm a bit worried that I'm going to be too expensive. Like, well, you, you are, you, you are, but I also <laughs> value the fact that My you're going to do things to the dog that I'm not willing to do. I'm just <laughs> yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should have responded to something else and then I tangent to the dogs again. What was it? <laughs> it's what we do. It's what we do. Specialist, being a specialist in design. Yeah. Yep. Totally. Ooh, and just all owning that it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's confidence in it. Um, so I love this little trashy artist. Cause I feel like that's like my alter ego as well. I love, I love the name has asked how often do people um, balk at your prices though? Not often. Incorrect. I would say at least 60% of people inquiries that I have tell me I'm too expensive. At least 60%. Really? That is interesting. Oh. It's and so hard to I, gauge these things because we're in like different countries, different markets, you know, like I listen to a lot of interviews with American people. I'm like, I feel like there's just some things that maybe aren't, I don't know, like the differences between financial stuff there in New Zealand are so little tiny differences that make a thing. I don't get yeah. people balk at mine too often, which means maybe I'm still not charging enough, but it does still happen. Yeah. Um. I mean, I had two inquiries yesterday and a lot of the things that I'm changing within my business are actually putting more hurt. It sounds so counterintuitive. And I'm telling you right now, if this was someone telling me this when I was itty bitty designer, I'd be like, ah, what are you doing? But I'm actually putting like, hurdles in to stop clients that aren't going to value me like mm. before I have to interact with them. So for instance, when someone sends me an, an inquiry by my inquiry form, I then send them to a brief builder form so they can actually write out their brief. And I'm actually considering putting on there, um, please note that these are the average prices for what you 
are probably inquiring for. So like, this is the average price of a brand build. This is the average price of a mural. Um, mm -hmm. And putting it up there and saying, if you, your budget does not match these, I may mm. not be the designer for you. Mm, um, yeah. Because otherwise I sit in my emails all day. Like yesterday I had three inquiries and one told me I'm too expensive, one ghosted, um, and one has set up a meeting. So that's just standard. And the fact is, too, no, no, but, but too mean, one expensive, out one out of three. But <laughs> if I was too cheap and then they didn't value my time, and then I have to put all this extra energy without putting the fuck around fee on top because that's what they deserve. <laughs> then like, yeah. 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 Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm, I'm really like interested it. that you don't have pushback as much as, as like, so you get most of the jobs that you pitch for? Mm, yeah, I think so. I like, it's not it's not that I get a hundred percent of the jobs that I pitch for, no way. Yeah, of course. Um I'm just trying but to But do you take on it. jobs that you don't that you are uh, so a lot of the time like I think we take on jobs just because it's like, okay, need, need, yeah. need, need, need. Nah. Um I'm not in it for the bad times. Good. <laughs> I used That's to great. don't get me wrong. I did when I was younger, for sure. I would take on jobs and be like, oh, it's going to pay me well. I'll put the things in the boxes. It'll be fine. And I'd be like, yeah. this is boring. I've got a really low tolerance for boring, which is obviously why I do what I do. Mm. Yeah, I've um, got a couple of jobs at the moment that have got boring bits. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is just part of it. Like, yeah. Final edit also, the PowerPoint. <laughs> The world's a little bit different at the moment as well. Like a lot of us, um, especially, I mean, obviously I live in Fairyland where we have one lockdown per year for a few weeks and so cute. the country almost completely empty of COVID. Um, but still, for the rest of the I used the world, to joke that New Zealand is like Fisher Price, my first country. But you seem to have it right. Like there's there's nothing... Like What's you guys price? have got it. Oh, the toy company. <laughs> so it's like, take it out of the box and set it up as the instructions, and then it works. And you're like, cool. Whereas, like most of the other places are just like, okay, this is like a half baked Lego box that I got at someone's garage sale, and I'm just trying to put it together and make it work. And then when I haven't got like two pieces that fit together, I'm just gonna duct tape them together, just being like, I can do this. I can do this. But you, know, oh, shit. you guys seem to have it so well put and no. like, yeah, we just but it's secretly love Jacinda. Everybody loves Jacinda. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's pretty good. Um, New Zealand's only perfect by comparison. Just remember that. Like, yeah, it's very true. There's a lot of there's a lot of jagged bits still, but. <laughs> I am very, very, very grateful to have been able to pretty much do what I want for the last year, move around the country, hug whoever I want, and not have to stay at home. Except and as right someone now. who is a self-proclaimed travel bug, like you are definitely <laughs> someone who has travelled to different corners of the world to do what you do, which is, I think, is something that um, yeah. if you were to look at a creative's bucket list, that's something that's pretty high up there. So yeah. tell me a little bit more about the the corners of the world that your design has taken you to oh i miss those corners so much um I try not to think about it too much um not heaps of corners it's taken me to your beautiful country yeah to um speak at the typism conference three or four years ago nobody's really sure um <laughs> <laughs> and a few art projects over there as well over the years um in 2000 and 19 I was very lucky to get to go over to um, Mexico for a couple of projects and also the um, the Virgin yeah. Islands yeah 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 Mexico was sea walls as well as um, another mural festival organized by um, Proyecto Panorama who are a group of fucking cool humans that are based in Cancun who um, Basically, their lives, their their lives work. They're all kind of um, my age, and they 
bring so much creativity into that city and they brought in muralists from all around the world and it, there's like just art everywhere and wow. cool community based stuff as well so that was another another project there and then sea walls and um yeah and the virgin islands <laughs> just went and painted murals in the virgin islands no big deal <laughs> Whatever. Isn't it funny that like the things that we didn't necessarily take for granted, but we didn't realize how foreign they We didn't they realize they could be taken now. away. Yeah. yeah. So like it. I had in around about the same time, um, I was lucky enough to travel to Italy to oh, yes. um, wear dresses and that I designed fabrics for and like take photos around you know, get up at four o'clock in the morning so that we could get the Trevi Fountain photo. Um, oh my God. And, and I was literally in um, Italy for all of four days and then flew back. And Whoa. then same thing with Letter West. I was in Letter West for Wednesday till Saturday and then oh. flew back. And That's it's hectic. It's such a foreign concept now because, you know, world is falling apart like a wet cake yeah. um but you know i i have faith that we will get back to a different normal maybe not the same yeah. normal but yeah i think it'll also make us really more appreciative of the travel opportunities that future us will experience totally oh my god i'm interested to see what it is gonna look like i've always hmm. had that that it's a privilege for, like i'm aware of that to to be like I'm going to go to Bali this year and do it and just go and hang out and paint for a month and lie in some mm -hmm. We were going to go and get married at Fiji in Fiji next year. <gasps> cute. What a cute <laughs> thing for Jazz to think. <laughs> next year, maybe. Maybe next year. Uh, so we're still getting married, but uh, it's going to be here. It'll be okay. in April next year. So okay. it'll, uh, it'll happen. It will. <laughs> Fiji late honeymoon. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually even just pushed all the things that you usually have before the wedding to after the wedding. I'm like, Ro, can I just have a bachelorette party like after the wedding? He's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Whatever. So your friends can actually come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um, joys of yeah, having so bridesmaids it, it that are in different states. How that goes. I'm really looking forward to, to being able to get back out there safely and, um, and paint things in other people's countries. A lot of the American artists are doing it already. They're moving around a little bit, which is, you know. It's what they're doing. It's a thing. Not it's how, happening. It's not how we're doing it here, but it's how they're doing nope. it. New. <laughs> nope. But <laughs> props home. to them. Like, you know, we're, and I think it's also um, given people an opportunity to go, okay, what's in my backyard? Like, mm, what yeah. opportunities can I create for myself in my own backyard? And yeah. I really think that um, a lot of the videos you've actually been posting uh, on stories specifically because I just sit on stories and just... Um, but, like, oh. yeah. But it's not that doomy. Like, no. if, you, if you stray away from the doom stuff, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, like, seeing how the um, approach to illustration can then form different ways and the differences aren't that grand between a wall, a canvas and a digital iPad sort of situation. It's yeah. just the execution, it just feels a little bit different, right? Yeah. Sometimes on an iPad it feels harder than painting on a wall because <clears throat> you can't <throat> zoom in on a wall, you know, but you can zoom in so much on the iPad and see what you did wrong. Uh, how many hour. times how many times have you double tapped a wall oh not <laughs> none not <laughs> definitely not times. none yeah uh, i've, about I've done a curve and held my pen uh, held my paintbrush <gasps> waiting for it to snap <laughs> i'm like damn it <laughs> oh damn yeah i did it i remember doing it earlier this year um when we were painting down in the south island for a festival there and it was it, that was a stucco wall for, t for context, so I was deeper in the delirium than usual, and it was the, it was the second mural and back to back. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god. 
That's do you tough. always find that you walls are so, such a weird thing that only if you've painted a wall or you've been a muralist or you've you you can feel this? Do you feel that walls are cold? I just always feel that walls are cold. Like I'm always like whenever I'm painting, this part of my hand is always the coldest part on my body because it's closer to the wall. Is it just me? Oh, uh, you've been in Melbourne too much. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna change. Uh yeah, that's what I always <laughs> feel like is go north. I, I will I as soon as I can. Also I don't think I hmm. Don't know, but mittens are great. Fingerless gloves. I have a pair these of are, fingerless these gloves. These are my mural mittens. Oh my yeah. goodness, mural mittens, perfect. <laughs> that's what you need. They're great. Um, not with the fingers because that's hard, but with the fingers removed, yeah. then you only have cold fingers, not a, not a cold hand. <laughs> that can be quite good. I don't know. Remember thinking about walls being cold much though. Also, I'm not I really hope that the next time it. that you go uh, go to a wall, you're just like, huh. Hmm. Well, because my brushes, they have really long handles. So a lot of the oh, time oh, I've got this gosh. hand on the wall and, and this hand's not touching it. This is a great 3D demonstration, <laughs> eh? Do you like this? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone with VR headsets on is just like, whoa! <laughs> Really, am I, am I wavering volumes of excitement? <laughs> Sorry, team. No, it's what we do. It's what we do. Amateur okay, hour. So if you were to pick a word to describe your career so far, what word would you pick? Fluid, I think. Yeah. It's, it's been like a, um, I've sometimes compared it to a, some people have the t-shirt, choose your own adventure story. Um, <laughs> where like yeah. you go, you pick a path and you go along the path and then you're at a crossroad and you're like, um, I kind of feel like doing this now, or I could not, I'm going to do that. And it, and so it's could have sort of branched along the way. Like I started, um, at the very, the, at the beginning of the dream, um, which was when I was like in my very early twenties, it's like, I'm going to be an illustrator. Because I went through a school system where we were taught that art's not a job, um, which is a shame. Um, yeah. Hopefully that's changed these days, but it's quite common for most um, of this generation. So in my early 20s, I was like, no, nah, actually, I reckon art can be a job. I'm seeing some people doing that. So I started doing illustration and then also dove into graphic design because I had those base skills um, and that was an easier way to make a living, to do both of those things. Um, New Zealand's tiny. <laughs> There's only so many clients available. Nah. Um, and then it, that went along and I was sort of doing them both. And then I was like, ooh, lettering? Lettering's a thing? I love drawing letters. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to make a whole thing out of this. And just went real deep on the letters because I'd always liked it. Like I'd liked it since I was a child, but again, didn't know it was a thing. Um, and then from there, you know, there's the next branch and then it branched into sign painting. Um, can't remember. Oh, because a, a good friend of mine is like a fucking genius sign painter who lives in Auckland. Nigel, if you, I don't know. He's probably at work. Um, Hi, Nigel. <laughs> He'll be at work. He'll be at work being a genius doing something. Um, <laughs> and so I got really into that for a while and then discovered the murals. I'd sort of dabbled on little walls and been out painting with friends. Um, but there just sort of came this point maybe four or five years ago. I was like, oh, damn, I love painting on walls. This is fun. I get to be outside. I get to be talking to people. Best case scenario the sun is shining, best, more best case scenario, there's palm trees um, mm -hmm. and it's in the Virgin Islands. Yeah, so it's kind of like these little bridges that happen along the way. And even now I think um, I might be at a little crossroads again, like graphic design fell by the wayside because like I was saying before, I, I'm just, I'm not, I don't have the right kind of brain for all that compartmentalization stuff and the and the nitty gritty and the straight lines. Um, 
And so that fell aside, but I'm still doing murals, illustration, um, sign painting. And, but I'm also trying right now to focus more on creating physical products because I just haven't bothered for such a long time. I'm like, oh, I can't really It's a great like, opportunity now too. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Because of where we're at in the world. And I've sort of done little print runs as I've gone along, but not, not really focused on it. So now I'm, and I'm quite enjoying it. It's like, I've got a bit more time and space to actually work on stuff and build up a bit of a catalog of stuff that can be available to buy. Just that yeah. already exists. That a client great. doesn't have any say in, just me. You yeah. are your own client, which is always, uh, I feel like a bit of a double-edged sword, at least for me, because I sit there and I'm like, I have all the opportunity to fail and succeed at the exact same time. Um, and I always say that I'm 90% good at doing 90% of any job. And it's always that last 10% that I'm like, this is going to take a while. This is uh, yeah, this is it's so while. true. I'm at that with the piece I'm working on right now. Like I've got it all done and I'm looking at it and going, okay, there's 10% remaining and I can't figure out what needs to change. So I am spending a lot of time moving little bits around. I feel like a, a great piece would be like, but is it done? True. But, <laughs> but, but, it, but is it done? But is it finished yeah. yet? I don't know. <laughs> like, but, but is it good enough yet? But is it... Ah, oh, oh, no such worst. thing doesn't exist. Never seen it. <laughs> what does that look like? <laughs> it's done when the time runs out, I reckon. <laughs> oh my goodness, I am. I'm disappointingly the most productive between the hours of eight and ten at night. Oh, you're one of those. And it's because nice. that's like the morning. I I am. I became a freelancer because I like sleeping um, yeah. and I have no shame about it. I will, anything that you see posted on here or, or emailed to you, if it is pre 9am, it is because it has been scheduled that way. Automated. I have, <laughs> I am, I am all about the, the smoke and mirrors when it comes to anything pre 9am. Um, yep. But as soon as, I start my day, I'll have my coffee, I'll come into here and, and start kind of planning out the day and scheduling out things as best I can. Um, and then I will do seven things all at once. <laughs> <laughs> and then answer that email, but then follow up on that call. But then also, and then it'll just be this knot of like tangled earphones all day that I'm just like slowly yeah. undoing each knot. And then you get back to that and email and you're like, how did I, what, I was writing this. What even happened? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so then four o'clock will come around and my partner finishes at four. He works eight till four. And so we'll go for a walk. We'll spend time together. We'll then cook dinner and then I'll sit on the couch and I'll do the work that I had scheduled or the end, the finishes of everything. So it's almost like that. Okay. It's all now all untangled. I'm just going to roll it all up. And at yeah. the end of the day, I'll put those rolled up headphones in my bag. And the next morning they will, it's like they've, you know, gone, Hey guys want to wrestle. And it's yeah. just like re done yeah. that thing again. <laughs> I but love it. <laughs> I recognize that about myself. And so I try and put like things in place to be able to be productive and, yeah. you know, things like body doubling where you make sure that someone else is in the room with you so that you are productive um, Ooh, or yeah, post-it notes, as you can see, th these are all uh, Instagram uh, ideas, oh, yeah. Yeah. blog nice. ideas, work. Nice. Um, <clears throat> but actually like putting them physically in front of me and going like, here is the job that you need to do, Jasmine. Uh, yeah. And then trying use, to be kind. I use Trello for that, but you have to actually open the app to see the Trello. <laughs> I do this great thing. I, I wake up quite early these days um, because Pippi doesn't give me a choice. Um, Sleeps so, until 9.30, 10 o'clock and sometimes in the bed. 
I look forward to those well, days. I wake up at six, um, which if you had told Kelly of five years ago that, she'd be like, hell no, you don't. You don't go to bed before midnight. I'm like, yeah, no, it feels good. Um, I wake up at six, but I do this thing in the mornings where I'm like, the world is my oyster. I've got a whole day. Oh, I'll just fuck around for a bit because it's morning and I'll do all the important stuff in the afternoon. And then it gets to 11 and I've panic still got to time <laughs> is the biggest lie I tell myself on the daily. I've still got time. Mm. Bitch, yeah. you don't. <laughs> and then next thing you know, it's four o'clock. We're like, oh God, okay. Guess I'm working to seven. It's fine. Yeah. Fine at the lockdown doing? anyway. Yeah, where am I, I mean, do? where am I going to go? Yeah, just chill out, draw some more things. Yeah, nah, then, uh, it, it works out. It balances out, but it's a constant. Like, <coughs> I've done this for so long. And probably there's very organized people out there that are way better at it, but... Good on them. It's just, yeah. <laughs> what do you do with all that extra time? Good on them, living their lives. Exactly. It's, um, it is what it is. Yeah, and I think, you know, knowing your own um, stre strengths, but not mm. calling them weaknesses, calling them quirks. Uh, <laughs> <is a great laughs> way. Framing it. It's just fine. Yes, yes. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're, good at, we're good at what we do, and that encompasses everything, just yeah, all totally. of the madness. And the work gets done. Yeah, so. exactly. And it'd so be a different story if I was letting We can put a tangent. Yeah, exactly. And that's, and that's where it comes to, like, if it's client work, then that takes priority. And a lot of the times it takes priority over my own stuff that I actually need to do. Yeah. Like the fact that I decided yesterday that I'd change a colour scheme in all of my portfolio uh, items on my website and I've applied it to one portfolio item. Now I'm like, oh, I need to apply it to all of them. Oh, it's just sitting the there. Oh, damn it. Damn. Uh, oh, well. Future Jazz's problem. Uh, <laughs> I love that we completely tangent constantly because uh, that's what we do. But Sorry. when we were talking a little bit earlier, don't even, uh, when we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, the idea of charging for what we do, we also, mm -hmm. and I think this is something that you and I recognise really quite deeply, is that money is not everything. It's not everything that, you know, that I'll have jobs that, I do that are very little money, but they've got a different kind of reward. Absolutely. So what sort of things come into play when you're looking at, like what factors help you decide if a project is right for you if the budget isn't there? If it isn't there? Mm. Um, definitely. Or maybe but... not as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> top part, like a really high priority for me is no matter what the budget or the client is, is to get a gauge of that company organization's values, right? So there's a baseline of, you know, like just normal people that try to be more or less good people. Um, then there's social environmental causes, um, which mm -hmm. almost always don't have a lot of money, unfortunately, because of the system that's currently operating. Um, and then there's the, the, like the, the big shop clients. Um, and fortunately these days there are some big companies out there that, um, have good values and do live them as well, but there's a lot mm. with shit circumstances going on. So I always screen, um, potential clients for whether or not I, I could actually walk away at the end of the day and feel good about doing anything for them sometimes it's a hard no like if it's fast fashion or some bullshit um mm -hmm. but then yeah when the budget isn't there um and there's a scale of that as well often like the i have this so often because obviously most of my work has an environmental bent so i do get approached by a lot of people that have low budgets but those the people that are working in those organizations are often working their butts off to get funding so that they can fully pay me properly as well, which, mm -hmm. you know, says a lot about humans. Um, mm. And the right kind of humans as well, because it's, yeah. it's quite often the, 
the clients that fight you on price or that they try yeah. to control or or micromanage or have <clears throat> believe they have a bigger part to play in the creative process than they possibly yeah. do they're actually <laughs> not the clients you want <laughs> that was so <laughs> that was so politely spoken <laughs> They're not the main character, okay? I believe they um, have a bigger role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to that, like, um, I take enjoyment into account. If I'm going to have a really good time doing something, it's going to add to my portfolio. It's going to give me a chance to explore something that, you know, because sometimes you're given a lot more freedom when there's less budget. So that's a mm -hmm. payoff. And I, as mentioned, really enjoy good times over bad times um and then of course like if we we are really fortunate to have creative skills and to be able to use those to help to like mm -hmm. to support good causes like i'm not an academic i i cannot write a bunch of stuff um i live in new zealand <laughs> But if I'm able to make something beautiful and it's going to amplify the voice of something that I believe in, that's kind of, that's more rewarding than money. Like, I reckon all of the jobs that I've done that are for low budgets, for kids, for animals, for environment, for ocean, for anything, I come away with the best, like, I come away with goosebumps from that stuff and I want to write about it and I want to talk about it and that's what I'm here for, like. I'm, I obviously have to pay bills and I love the rest of my work, but to be able to have those really meaningful experiences within my job, mm -hmm. yeah, money can't buy that. So Yeah, I think it's really kind of something to recognise that if, <clears throat> if you're a at the end of the day, if you're able to pay your bills with the money you've earned and you can sleep well, mm. knowing that you've given what you can and done what you what you're able to um yeah. then that's important I mean I personally was um brought up by uh, a small business family I worked as a butcher for 14 years in my family business um, I just saw that the other day <laughs> and so you know part of that um a lot of the the values um from my parents especially my dad who has had a had been a butcher since he was 14 um, wow. and has run butcher shops across Adelaide. He's always operated on the basis of if you're doing well, that's an indicator that you should be giving back or doing something for someone else. So a lot yeah. of the times, like when he was had a busy Christmas, he would make sure that part of the ritual was finding someone to give back to who needed it, who Awesome. deserved it and like it was always about um you belong to the world so this is this sentence of you belong to the world is actually tattooed on my sister's arm um what and the other cool side dad. says yeah re you belong to the world was dad and reflect the good you seek is my mum. so it's always great about parents. great parents <laughs> wonderful parents um yeah. and the, it was always about you what you put out into the world is important. It's not a reflection on your parents. It's not a reflection on the people around you. It's a reflection on yourself that you're putting out into the world. And so if you can be doing good and then when the good happens to you, you then share it or you pass it on or you make sure that it actually keeps like the reflection going, that's yeah. more important than sitting up there in your ivory tower with, uh, like 17 different types of cheese. Can you tell I'm on the cheese wagon this week? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're sitting up there and, you, and you've, if you've got 17 cheeses and you're not able to share with them with anyone, they're going to go off. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Right. So write that down. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I saw, I saw a good little meme this morning or yesterday that was saying, imagine if we put a cap on, um, all of the millionaires, but just before they got, or, it might've been millionaire or billionaire. I don't know. Cause either, either of those things. Is Both of those fresh. words don't really mean much to me. <laughs> they don't mean anything. Exactly. It might've been billionaire, I think. 
Probably. I think houses cost a million dollars these days. Um, yep. And they put a cap at the 9999, however many nines come just before a billion. And then everything that you earned above that was mandatory. You had to give it, give it back and give it away to, you know, somewhere deserving, of which there are many places. That'd be cool. Really um, it was obviously uh, written better than that, yeah. so I told that quite badly, but the general... No, identically, it was word for word that. No, that's what it was. It's a long <laughs> meme, you had to scroll through several pages. <laughs> um, yeah, but, I, yeah. Uh, but I also think that like, when it comes to those people who are in the upper echelon of wealth, I think that part of the reason why they are successful is because they don't have a fear of talking about money. And I think that mm. the more we talk about it, the more we get comfortable with it, the more we're able to have those really honest and unique conversations that are, are based around money and value actually mm. being valued, I mm. guess, and, mm. and not glorified or put up on this pedestal of like, oh, they're up there. It's like, well, no, that, that's just that's weird, kind of eh? the ground. Mm. Where did it come from? I feel like I read about it once. Like, where did this thing come from where we have to keep money a secret? It's got to be some sort of, I won't say it got to have come from one of two places. Uh. <laughs> well, I, um, I was following this money mindset coach and I, I must apologize to any of them watching. I follow about six of you. Um, so a lot of the information just all comes kind of similarly. And so I find it hard to define which one, but a lot of the time it's kind of going, People figure that if they talk, if they don't talk about money, because money makes them feel bad, the bad feeling will go away. Mm. But realistically, Ed. the more that you talk about it, the more it feels okay. Like there was a time when you didn't know how to use a spoon. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it, it's just getting used to it and getting normal uh, and getting comfortable with it. And I also think that comes not just money, but value as well, because I feel like if you're having um, a considerable amount of the jobs that you take on um, and getting yeses and getting those situations, you're obviously comfortable about communicating what your value is. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't stress about it much these days. I used to, you know, feeling real like, send. Oh, I hope they don't run and hide. Oh. I hope it's not too expensive. It definitely wasn't. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I feel I feel fine quoting for stuff these days, to be honest. Um, but as far as talking about it outside of my inbox, that yeah, that's still an awkward space for sure. Um, mm. We're we we're, we're getting better. Um, I mean, amongst the creative community, there's cool stuff happening. Obviously, from your wonderful kingdom of pricing that you are building um but i'm seeing more of it around the internet as well i have um there's a group of us um new zealand based artists who we have a little private chat group called fuck you pay me um where we talk about <laughs> so many obscenities in this chat we talk about um if stuff comes in we can bounce it off each other and go if it's something one of us hasn't worked on before, it can be like, how much would you guys charge for this? Or, hey, I just got this email from a client. Did you get that too? Because we live in New Zealand. Often the case. Price shopping. Like, yeah. Which then we are able to um, talk about what we want to charge for it and go back at them with the same price so that they're not price shopping anymore, which is a mm. cool thing that we're able to do. We have a long-term, I and a few others have a long-term goal here of actually forming kind of an unofficial union where everybody's communicating about that stuff. All of Because a lot of us do real similar um, work, like not style, but the murals and illustration. I have a lot of peers who are operating sort of one foot in each. Um, and to get together, yeah, like a, like an unofficial union where we can all chat about how we're pricing things, 
what the rates are, you know, and build each other up or whatever to maybe keep it a bit more fluid, yeah. not have – it would be great for those that are charging too little mm. to see what other people are doing and, and boost up, just transparency, mm. but also kind of stop that price stop shopping shit because – you shouldn't be out looking for artwork if you want the cheapest one. It's dumb. Yeah. And I think um, recognising, and this is one thing that I was talking to one of my coaching students about the other week, which was if you're as accessible as milk and bread, if you are an essential service, yeah. then you're not recognising what your value is. Like yeah. you are a luxury item. Yeah. And luxury items uh something that are aspired to hold or have or own um, rather than it being like a it's design is not a commodity like you, you can live without it uh so is illustration and art but it's kind of eh, like sure. it, yeah it's but gonna... like we have a whole different world if you took away all the creativity there's a lot of exactly things people don't realize as well are like it's a nice to have it's like mm, if I took away all the nice to haves in your environment it'd be pretty boring mm, and just and it would be not a nice life like, it'd would be like, okay. yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so if you um, could go back to a younger Kel and and give her some advice what would you say my advice to younger Kel would be to um get a better grip on what a lot of money is she, I had pretty low again I'm not I wish I was I'd like to be I'm not driven by money right like I need yeah. it I work to earn it hard but it's not I, you know some people have that real that real motivating like money thing whereas I'm more like hide like a care bear um mm. So I would so say the sun yeah. shine on your belly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must come across as such a fruit cake. Okay? I would say yeah, um, <laughs> set, the, set the bar higher because I would invoice for stuff and be like, well, that's enough. I can pay my rent and buy some nice food and have, have you, you know, go out to a gig and have a bottle of wine and job done. Whereas 10 <laughs> years from there, you're like, yeah, but like deposits on houses are cool. Um, maybe you'll want that one day. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> oh no, we've uh, paused. Okay, it'll hopefully come back, guys. I, uh, I'm seeing this as a recurring nightmare. We're slowly getting back there. Yee! going to move everyone hope you're ready hope you're holding on let's just see if oh no she's gone she may come back guys um but I actually really think that there's a, a massive relevance to understanding that if you're pricing yourself really low at the start of your journey at the start of your business at when everything kind of starts you've got so much further to go when it comes to well, what do you want to be charging five years down the road, 10 years down the road? And if it's going to be a hard slog to get from there or get from where you are now all the way up, would you want to make it a little bit easier by starting a little bit higher? Um, if she comes back in the next couple of minutes, awesome, wicked. Let's hope that she does. <laughs> But um, I really, really want to say thank you, uh, Kel, if you're watching this in the future and we haven't jumped back on, um, I want to say thank you for being part of today's Life of Advice. Um, also, you may have seen this week, I have been <coughs> preaching the last couple of weeks about my newest freebie, which is a online pricing calculator. It's something that I'm actually really, really proud of. Um, you literally log on put in how much you want to be making, put in all of your expenses and how many hours you're actually wanting to work per week. And it spits out exactly how much you should be charging per hour, which I don't know about you, but I like when someone else does the math for me. So that's kind of what I've been setting up for this. Also, um, 
<laughs> a great slice. Thank you, Nikita. Um, but I also want to point out that Kel is actually doing some awesome merch at the moment. So I'll make sure that I link to her bio in the IGTV uh, after this. That'll be uploaded straight after. But thank you so much for joining me on the slice of advice today. Um, I really hope that uh, I get to see you on the next meal time. Um, next week, we actually have Carl Tillman, which I'm very excited for. And then the week after, it's my birthday. So in two weeks time on the 15th, it's going to be my birthday. And I'm going to be having my coach on here, my De Leon, which is going to be really exciting as well. We've got a couple more uh, weeks Oh, the, the calculator was spot on where I thought I should be and it's so easy to use. Oh, she's trying to reconnect. <laughs> it's the best slice of cheese. Oh, guys, this is awesome. Um, so I'm really excited to be sharing the next couple of guests with you. Some of them I'm actually a little bit like starstruck over. Um, there's a couple that I've kind of been chasing for a while and I'm going, oh my goodness, you actually want to talk to me? This is really cool. So stay tuned. And also, if you have any um, requests on who you would like to see on a slice of advice, please send me a DM on who you want to see, because the best way for me to round up the uh, clients and sorry, round up the guests that you want to see is to tell them that people want to see you.